Everyone's looking at Kevin Dunn. You really didn't talk too much about that when we talked about Vince. The idea that this could be the end of Kevin Dunn's run in WWE and his influence in WWE. Well, and uh, we mentioned it uh, earlier that you, nobody's the executive producer of anything for 40 years, but also, you know, it's it's time for something to change. And if they're going to change the the product in any appreciable way, they got to get rid of Kevin Dunn because he's been the primary Vince whisperer behind this is entertainment, we're not wrestling, don't have anything to do with wrestling. That miserable little fucking buck tooth bastard. It just hates the idea. And we've talked about it many times. Hates the idea he's in the wrestling business and will not admit it to anybody. So, you know, I don't I haven't cared for 30 years whether he burst into spontaneous combustion or not. But he's older than I am, and he's looked it too for a long time. How much older, actually? I never thought about that. I don't know. He's been older than than I am ever since I first met him. I don't know how much, but, you know, but he stayed ahead of me. So it's, you know, it's time for him to go off. It's not like he's hurting for money. He's leached millions of dollars off of a business that he didn't even want to be in and wasn't proud enough of to fucking admit it. So maybe we'll get some better camera work. Maybe we'll get some more sports-based presentation. He's been the, I mean, even past the writers and et cetera, of people who take it, Vince takes their advice. He's been the main proponent for goofy, bullshit, bad entertainment in wrestling for ever since I was there. So, it'll, I mean, it'll be good riddance, but we'll we'll see how long it takes. I think one of the reasons he's trending is the stories going around about something from 2006 where Kevin Dunn, I have to read the whole thing here. He either didn't want to push Becky Lynch or he didn't want to use Becky Lynch because he didn't think she was attractive enough and he hated her accent. Oh, yeah. Wait, I think it was, it wasn't 2006, was it? Was it that long ago? Has she been around that long? But at, at one point, yeah, it was like she he didn't like her accent and didn't want to put, you know, he's another one. 2016, of the, excuse me. 2006, there you go. He's another one of the, uh, you know, big fake boobies and lingerie model. Uh, Laurenitis was was uh, signing women that Kevin Dunn wholeheartedly agreed with. He didn't care because he doesn't care about wrestling and he didn't care about making the business look goofy. He just likes, as a matter of fact, that's what he said one time to somebody who was telling me they were on the plane. I can't remember how this came up, but they're on the private plane with Vince and somebody's telling a story about one and, and Kevin Dunn sitting there, of course, like Renfield. Uh, next to Dracula, right next to Vince, going, yeah, she needs some boobies. Oh, it was one of the girls was flat-chested. So Kevin said, yeah, she needs some boobies. And everybody was going around for a while afterwards imitating how he said, boobies. Anyway. And I guess one of the big things you're talking about influence, if he really is gone, from your experience there alone, the guys that he put down, the guys that he didn't want to use, the guys that never got, guys and girls, who never got used, because of Kevin Dunn saying that he didn't believe in them and trying to convince Vince of it. What do you think of that? I mean, how many people, how many people's careers were hurt by Kevin Dunn? And how many people, I remember you and Percy, Paul Barrow, sitting down for an interview years ago and him going yeah. off on Kevin Dunn. How you many people what? didn't like him when you were there? Um, well, uh, uh, some people, like there was this one kid, I won't mention anybody's name, this one kid worked in the studio just loved him, just adored him. He was kind of like a production assistant guy. And boy, after I fucking blistered him, uh, old Bucky in Nova Scotia that time at the meeting, that one little production assistant, he didn't want, he was very brusque with me. Yes, Jim, no, Jim. After that, he was upset. <laughs> Other people were like grinning, like, God, we wish we could have said that shit. It just depended. It depended on who it was. And you ask whose careers, did, I don't know, because here's another thing. It's not like, that I spent a lot of time in any meetings with Kevin Dunn and Vince together where it wasn't a production meeting about the show or production meeting about what we're, we're doing on television, just bullshitting around. I wasn't, and, and Kevin was good at that where he wouldn't let a lot of people hear him saying, oh, that guy sucks or whatever. But I do know that just as an overall reputation or summation or opinion of the guy, I've, I think I've told this before, but I'll tell you this, and that tells you enough about Kevin Dunn. 
there were a number of ex-WWE expatriates or refugees or whatever in TNA back in 2007, 8, 9. And after the production meeting there, we're sitting around Mike Tanay, Don West, and some of those people. Terry Taylor was one. And we're somehow that Kevin Dunn came up. And as we were talking about him, not mentioning his name, but just the phrase came out, that little prick's the most just miserable son of a bitch I've ever been around. Somebody else walked in the door without hearing the setup to the conversation and said, are you talking about Kevin Dunn? <laughs> like, God damn it. That was perfect. That's the summit. He's a little fucking miserable prick most of the time. He has that look on his face and he's got that attitude and that demeanor that unless he's sitting next to Vince Dracula, he's just miserable. So that's my opinion of Kevin Dunn and other people's too.